Chapter 346, Unfathomable Power When the sunlight faded and night shrouded the sky, the city was ablaze with splendid lights. The capital was the cradle of countless dreams, and the tomb of many ambitions. Nia Ting sat behind the control panel and monitored every inch of the screen. Sure Xue Jin smiled, how is it going? Can they still survive after three days without sleep? Three days without any sleep. The kid is not someone who would obey, neither do I expect him to. I am simply curious about how he's going to fight back, and whether he will use all he's got, Nye Ting replied calmly. From Nye Ting's point of view, Lu Xu would never give up. Thus, there was no winner or loser in their rivalry and he was only interested in Lu Xu's next action. What are they doing now? Sure Xue Jin was curious. They've been hiding these few days, but to minimal success. I guess they have given up on that idea. Today, instead of hiding, they bought themselves two sets of black clothes with black masks, and are now squatting quietly above a lit basketball court. I'm not sure what they are up to, Nye Ting shook his head. In that instance, Nye Ting suddenly froze, what's happening? The basketball court was boisterous, and a group of middle-aged women were dancing to the noisy music, I love the boundless land, and the blooming flowers on the foot of the mountains. All of a sudden, Lu Xu stood up, this determines whether we can have a good night's sleep tonight. These women forced the students out of their basketball court and used violence. Are you sure about that? Chen Zhuan nodded, yes. It was just two weeks ago, and it made it to the front page of the news too. A student was beaten badly, and his face was covered by blood. Then, I'll have no emotional burden, after that, Lu Xu suddenly darted towards the crowd and carried away their loudspeaker. The women were all stunned in place. They took a while before they realized what had happened. Our loudspeaker was stolen. That little bastard. He's surely one of the basketball boys. We can't let him off, they were infuriated. Who was so shabby to steal their loudspeaker? Without music, how could they dance? With the loudspeaker in his arms, Lu Xu ran ahead. In fact, he was not even running at his full speed, just so that the women could still catch up to him. Burning with rage, the women followed closely behind. Their will to defend their dancing territory could never be underestimated and so is their ability to run. You might not be able to dance for three hours straight, but they could. Stop the hell right there. You little bastard. I will send you to the police once I catch you. Lu Xu curled his lips. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I'll send the loudspeaker up to the sky with hundreds of pleasant goats if I have the time. He would pause occasionally during the run. The place was only 800 meters away from the Lingjing Lane and within running distance. After he arrived at the lane, he took out the firecrackers he bought earlier, set them off and threw them down the underground tunnel. Instantly, the heavenly network was boiling in shock. Who dared to be so unmannered here? A group of men in black ascended from the tunnel, only to see a rechargeable loudspeaker placed at their doorstep. With the freedom of singing along the way, we shall sing to our heart's content. You are the most beautiful cloud in my sky, let me keep you by my side. Hey, by my side. How Ji Chao and the rest were totally at a loss. What the hell was that? Before they could process it, a group of middle-aged women rushed out from the corner. Seeing their loudspeaker together with people who looked exactly the same as Lu Xu, they were fuming with anger. To them, no power could be compared to theirs. What? They brought so many people. Beat them up. How Ji Chao's team was in shock. What was going on? Wait. We didn't steal your loudspeaker. It's worthless anyway, so why would we steal it? How Ji Chao tried to talk to them in a kind manner, since violence was a breach of the rules. Even so, it was hard to explain to these unreasonable women. The women became even more irate, how is our loudspeaker worthless? How Ji Chao was speechless. Did they even catch the main point? In fact, usually, people carrying weird things could never come near to Lingjing Lane. 
but this time, Nye Ting did not inform his people at all, he was still seated and stared at the screen with his emotionless face. Sure Xue Jin's hands were trembling. After a while, he could not help but laugh out loud. <laughs> interesting. Pretty interesting. Nye Ting needed his temples, in my opinion, he should be thrown abroad to take care of external powers, like Li Xiao. Nye Ting had expected Lu Xu to launch a surprise attack against the Heavenly Network field operators in the day, plan a night ambush, reveal his trump card, or even disappear completely to somewhere not monitored. But this fellow was completely unpredictable. Who would imagine that he actually went to steal these middle-aged women's loudspeaker? Use an unfathomable power to counter another unfathomable power. There seems nothing wrong with it, Shushua Jean could not stop laughing. I think I can pay some attention to this kid when I'm tired of reading. How refreshing. What do you think about deploying him overseas? Nye Ting turned to ask. I'm just worried that he's not willing to go. You see, he's already buying houses and lands on Beimang, plus he has a 10-year-old sister. How would he be willing to go overseas? We are different from those foreign powers. We will not force him to abandon his sister, Shir Shuajin smiled. We shall wait, Nye Ting closed his eyes for a break. In the past, he had asked Li Xiao about his impression of Lu Xu. At that time, Li Xiao was singing Lu Xu's praises. Nye Ting regretted not realizing it earlier, that for a person to be commended by Li Xiao, how could he be normal? Well, this was the harshest comment that Li Xiao had ever received. With a roasted sausage each, Lu Xu and Chen Zuan walked on the streets and held their heads high. Lu Xu was in high spirits, we can have a good night's rest tonight, for sure. Chen Zuan was being a sycophant, you are the best, brother Xu. But, how about tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, Lu Xu was too absorbed in eating his sausage, let it be then. Whenever Lu Xu was feeling down, he would think about how good his life would be if he could simply get along well with Lu Xiaoyu, and now, he was wondering what Xiaoyu might be doing at that moment. None of it mattered to him, be it the assessment or his future prospects, only Lu Xiaoyu was important. But despite it all, the seventh night finally passed in peace. Chapter 347, Friends for Life Chen Zuan fell asleep on the carpet in the furniture store. As someone from an affluent family, he had been sighing with emotion about happiness and life. But the reality showed that he was simply too free. Once one became busy with securing a living, he would not even have the time to care about anything else. What is happiness? Happiness is the ability to sleep when you are sleepy. Lu Xu had forced himself to stay awake for three days. Although he could boost his energy by singing, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, but in these circumstances how could he do it? Sing it when he was being chased by Hao Ji Chao's team? Then how could he keep his foothold in the heavenly network in the future? After two hours of being badgered, Hao Ji Chao's people were finally clear that someone had shifted the blame onto them. Without asking the women, they already knew who was behind it, but they could not figure out why there had been no message from the heavenly king. On the eighth day of their urban survival, Hao Ji Chao did not come for Lu Xu and Chen Zuan at all. Lu Xu wondered, was something wrong? Are they no longer coming after us? Lu Xu was the kind of person who prayed no more once he was ashore. He could not wait to fight again after the good night of rest, but his rivals did not appear for a second time. All the way until the tenth day, there were no longer any pursuers at night. It seemed that the battle had finally come to an end. Stood on the streets, Lu Xu was in high spirits, as I expected, this era needs more heroes, to fight against all injustice. Chen Zuan was judging him, are you always this serious when you brag? At that moment, a black car came into sight. Lu Xu was slightly stunned, one car of fighters were no match for him at all. Could it be that the Heavenly Network was taking risks again, and believed that he could be taken down by so few people? However, the car stopped right in front of them. The window slid down and Hao Chi Chao shouted to them from the driver's seat, Get in. 
the assessment has ended ahead of the schedule. Don't touch me. I don't have money. Oh, Lu Xu was disappointed. For the past few days, their savings had been increasing steadily from selling pleasant goat balloons, and Lu Xu had not had enough of the satisfaction of making money. But this time, Hao Ji Chao came alone with the message, and dishearteningly did not even bring any money. Why did the assessment end before the stipulated date? Was it because Nye Ting was certain that everyone had let go of their arrogant airs? Lu Xu agreed that once the ultimate goal had been achieved, there was no point in continuing the assessment anyway. The car was shifting swiftly on the road towards Lingjing Lane. When they reached their destination, Chen Zuan pulled open the door and got off the car, followed by Lu Xu. The little fatty froze instantly and Lu Xu drew in a cold breath of air as well. Not good. At that moment, dozens of men in black walked out from both ends of the lane and waved their fists with a ferocious grin. Crap, Lu Xu was shocked and threw a punch at the driver's window. Despite its bulletproof material, the entire glass panel cracked at once. Due to the immense force of impact, the car almost toppled. It was not even Lu Xu's full strength. Surrounded by so many heavenly network fighters, Lu Xu realized that they had been tricked. Using early ending of the assessment as an excuse to trap them? Such a low move. Did they not have any bottom lines at all? After making sure that the car was all right, all of them laughed hideously. <laughs> what a surprise! How Chi Chao gave out a roar of laughter, beat him up. In that instance, Lu Xu lowered his waist and shattered the car door with his fist and held Hao Ji Chao in one hand. No car material was strong enough to defend against a fist from a class C fighter of the strength type. Lu Xu grinned. <laughs> what a surprise! From Hao Ji Chao's distress, plus 666. Hao Ji Chao swallowed his saliva, the assessment really is over. This is our greeting present for you. Actually, their intention was not to give Lu Xu and Chen Zuan a shellacking, but it was meant to be more like a way that veterans employed to put the newbies in their place. As a matter of fact, the veterans did not benefit from the chase earlier as well. After all, it was not an honorable story that over a hundred veterans could not even manage to catch two rookies. To tell the truth, they did not like those so-called geniuses at first. Their pampered manners were disdained by the veterans. However, through the fight, Lu Xu had won himself respect among the existing comrades. The chase had caused much trouble to Hao Ji Chao's team too, as Lu Xu had taken advantage of those who got lost from the main group and beat them up. With his true power shown, Lu Xu had earned himself their recognition. Thus, at that moment, Lu Xu found it ironic, it was not a surprise at all. He, Lu Xu, would never be weaker than anyone else. To him, he was the winner of this fight, and this was the only truth that mattered to him. With a foxy smile on his face, Lu Xu started to walk out slowly, thank you. I didn't expect to receive such a warm welcome. <laughs> Glad to meet all of you. How Ji Chao hissed. Let go of me. Friends for life. From Hao Ji Chao's distress, plus 666. Hao Ji Chao almost blurted out the next line of the lyrics. Suddenly, Nye Ting arrived from the air in his black cloak and landed quietly in the Lingjing Lane. He shot Lu Xu a cold glance, let him go. Everyone, follow me and tell the other groups to quickly bring the rest back. Only then did Lu Xu release Hao Ji Chao's arm. He did not dare to defy Nye Ting. But, he could be certain now that the assessment was indeed over and the others were on their way back too. Lu Xu relaxed at once, although the veterans became gloomy. After that, they all went down into the base. It was Lu Xu's first time to be in a base, not even in Luocheng did he get to go into one. Although his exceptionally high ranking granted him permission to enter, he never had the opportunity to go in, and he did not request it as well. He heard cars entering the lane from the surface, one after another. Then, the students were all reunited. Lu Xu had a strange feeling, he was even secretly happy. 
After all, the rest did not seem to have lived any better than him. One came back with an apron still on, another's hair was as messy as a bird's nest, some were as tanned as coal and others were covered with paint and dirt from head to toe. It was obvious what they had been doing for a living. Before they were forced to face survival, it seemed that there were many ways to do it and they had the liberty of choosing something decent. But the reality was, the world would never give you much preparation time nor many choices. What you could choose, however, was whether to live with it or not. Chapter 348 Impressive Nye Ting disappeared after he entered the base, while the other students who were released to survive alone in the city started to arrive. Only then did Lu Xu suddenly realize that in total, including Chen Zuan and himself, there were 84 Class A geniuses. But earlier on the train, there were only 32. Thus, subconsciously, Lu Xu had thought that there were only 30 plus attendees at the assessment. Judging from the current state, those unfamiliar faces were actually even more pitiful than Cheng Chiu and the rest. In fact, they had reached the capital five days earlier than those from the Beijing Guangzhou line, and all of them had secretly sneaked in. In other words, Lu Xu's batch was in the assessment for 10 days while the rest were in it for 15 days. But all of those students were scattered in different districts and none were at the train station, which explained the fact that neither side ran into each other. Undeniably, it took Nia Ting immense efforts to avenge his people. With no one attending to them, the other students were at a loss upon their arrival and could only wait for further notice. As for Lu Xu and Chen Zuan, everyone in the Heavenly Network was interested in taking a look at the two rookies who had fought for a few days with the veterans. Some experienced fighters uninvolved in the mission gathered near them, you are Lu Xu, and you are Chen Zuan, right? Other Class A geniuses were utterly confused. Were they celebrities? Why was everyone so curious about them? To the veterans, no hard feelings should be taken after the assessment was over. At the end of the day, it was not out of personal hatred, but that they were ordered to deal with the students. After all, all of them were comrades in arms. Now, every member in the capital's heavenly network was aware that over a hundred veterans were tasked to beat up two rookies, for three days and four nights. In the end, however, not only did they fail to catch the newbies, but they even had their money robbed as well. In addition, quite a few veterans who did not manage to catch up with their team were beaten black and blue by the rookies. Although Lu Xu's fists knew the limits, he did not go easy with his enemies' faces. That had earned him some nicknames in the Heavenly Network. In their daily chats, when people could not remember his name, they would say, Oh, the one who robbed our money the other day, or, Oh, the one who only hits people's face when he fights? Speaking of which, interestingly, during actual interpersonal interactions, the veterans were all starting to respect or even admire, the two fellows. How very impressive. Back in their days of assessment, who could fight back against the veterans? But now, there were two exceptions. However, they also knew that it was mainly Lu Xu's credit and was none of Chen Zuan's business. Hence, they attracted many veterans' attention. One person even shouted elatedly, My goodness, I've been wanting to beat Hao Ji Chao up for so long. I'll treat you to a beer another time. Sat by the side, how Ji Chao's face darkened at once, shut up. In fact, many people said similar things, but did not target how Ji Chao alone, my goodness. I've been wanting to beat Triple X up for so long. I'll treat you to a beer another time. My goodness. I'll treat you to a beer another time. As a result, Lu Xu immediately became a very popular person in the entire circle of the capital's heavenly network. Casting Chen Zuan's feelings aside, other Class A geniuses waiting there were all in shock. Who were those two beasts? They had been exhausted enough just trying to earn themselves a living, but how come it seemed that those two fellows picked a fight with more than 100 veterans? Holy crap! How strong were they? Nonetheless, what they did not know was that in fact, Lu Xu was only busy trying to escape, and his most brilliant fight was only against Hao Chao and four others. But with so many people talking at once, 
They thought that Lu Xu and Chen Zuan were chasing 100 plus veterans and beat them all up, which was pretty scary. Therefore, the misunderstanding successfully made Lu Xu a demon level figure in those Class A geniuses' hearts, someone they simply could not afford to mess with. In fact, in the crowd, there were two people from Qingzhou who had met Lu Xu before. The girl and the boy already knew that Lu Xu was powerful, as he was given a major military credit by Chen Bailey once they were out of the Salt Lake remains. Furthermore, his sister was extraordinarily strong as well, which made Lu Xu even more unforgettable. At that time, they had yet to be convinced by Lu Xu's power, but now, they had clear evidence. He was indeed strong. Those Class A geniuses who arrived late were confused by the commotion, but after knowing the truth, they all held Lu Xu in high regard. He was that much of a professional? Meanwhile, those who arrived in the capital together with Lu Xu were puzzled by another question. They all witnessed Lu Xu being carried away in a luxurious car, so why was he back here again? Their discussion made Lu Xu want to laugh. How would they believe that he was taken back by the Heavenly King himself? At that moment, all of the Class A geniuses were guided into a giant auditorium. To Lu Xu's surprise, the underground base was enormous, it was just like an inverted skyscraper. A man was standing on the podium. Lu Xu had seen him before. It was Shi Xue Jin. Lu Xu's impression on him was rather vague due to his low-key character, but he did remember that Li Xianyi had mentioned before that this man was resolved to be well-versed in the three teachings and to show a path to cultivation for the ungifted, ordinary people. Besides that, Lu Xu did not know anything else about the man. After everyone had settled down, Chi Xuejin smiled, research has shown that those who travel often have a higher chance of success. Does anyone know why? Lu Xu pondered for a while, because their parents are rich? From Chi Xuejin's distress, plus 199. As a man of manners, Chi Xuejin completely ignored him and continued, in addition to reading widely. You need to explore different places as well. But your traveling is meaningless unless it offers you a clearer understanding of the world and also, of yourselves. I believe, in the past 15 days, each and every one of you have certain takeaways. Maybe you are still unclear about some points, but don't rush. We can take it slow. This time in the capital, it was more of short-term training than a progress report. You are all class aptitude geniuses who are bound to become future mainstays in our heavenly network. But, cultivation ability alone is clearly insufficient. The world is full of injustices. It will fall into chaos if everyone uses his or her power for their own gains. More importantly, I will explain in detail the various methods of cultivation to you. The yin-yang kinship of the three that you have learned is incomplete as it was created solely for the purpose of fast improvement in abilities. But, when you reach Class C and are competent enough to ascend to Class B, we'll have to catch up with all the scenery that we have missed. Chapter 349, Television Box Shi Xue Jin's lecture was almost two hours in total. At that time, Lu Xu realized that when he was teaching pure cultivation theories, he could easily make reference to other sources of information to support his point making all concepts easily understandable. But actually, Lu Xu only needed to know one thing. The Heavenly Network had adopted a creepy shortcut by speeding up their students' ascension to Class C, just so that they could contribute to increasing the overall fighting ability of the network. However, besides comprehension, foundation was essential in the breakthrough to Class B as well. At the current stage, the students could no longer solely rely on the absorption of spirit chi and the completion of cycles for leveling up, which made class be unattainable for them all. In other words, as a result of the hasty development, their foundation was not strong enough. But the heavenly network could not afford to wait, otherwise an ability gap would form as a consequence. Hence, after their successful ascension to the peak of class C, all practitioners would need to return here again to perfect their cultivation with patch-like training methods. No wonder Zhang Yutong was stuck at the peak of Class C for so long. As the last time Lu Xu met him, he was already in the process of this step. 
At that time, Lu Xu could already sense the concentration in Zhang Yutong's spirit qi waves. According to Shi Xue Jin, the perfection would take relatively longer. But it would not be a matter of great concern, as all of them were already equipped with the basic fighting skills of a Class C. But Lu Xu wanted to say that he was the only Class C present, with few others like Chao Qingxi at the peak of Class D and the rest mid-Class D. It depended on whether they had experienced the cultivation acceleration phase at the remains. As the only Class C, the information at hand would be the most relevant to him, but strangely, he was the least interested among them all. Lu Xu had no experience in the training methods of the Heavenly Network at all, and he could not even use magical stones. Other people, including Chen Zuan, were fully engrossed in the lecture, but Lu Xu only wanted a call with Lu Xiaoyu. Sure Xue Jin had started his conclusion, this is just the beginning of the training. After this, you will be divided into groups and receive missions. For those who complete their missions, your entire group will be rewarded with the training measures from class D to C. Lu Xu was stunned. As he had expected, class A aptitude geniuses were privileged. Although they would not be spoon-fed with training measures at the peak of class D, other people who were stuck at the peak of class E were still waiting for an opportunity to accomplish some military achievements. But for the geniuses here, their opportunities were created by the Heavenly Network. As always, the Heavenly Network despised the mindset of getting something from nothing, but this time, they were providing the resources of something. Thus, it seemed that the Heavenly Network was determined to bring out the genius's character and perseverance, and even a high level of conformity in terms of thinking. All personal belongings had been claimed. At that moment, they realized that other people's weapons were all swords, but Lu Xu's were two spears. To the rest, his uniqueness became another piece of evidence for his exceptional power. As soon as Lu Xu switched on his phone, he was bombarded with over 100 notifications of missed calls, all from Lu Xiaoyu, followed by her spamming messages over the last 10 days. Worried, he immediately called Xiaoyu back. At that moment, the Heavenly Network did not disturb them as well. All of them needed to inform their family of their safety. They were given one hour of break time and were then led to their dorm rooms. Two people per room, and Lu Xu and Chen Zuan shared one room. Their dorm was equipped with modernized facilities and some items for unknown purposes. The rooms were arranged in rows like school dormitories. Inside, the beds had been set and there was a room number on each door. Even then, Lu Xiaoyu still did not let Lu Xu hang up the call. During room allocation, Hao Jichao cast a glimpse at Lu Xu and said, All right, quickly go have a shower and rest. From tomorrow onwards, you won't have an easy time. But this time it's not for the two of you, it's for everyone. Lu Xu shot him a glance and continued his conversation with Lu Xiaoyu, this time I really didn't touch your television box. Could it be the subscription plan has expired? Or you can ask someone to help you repair. In fact, Hao Jichao's team wanted to have a chat with Lu Xu, and honestly speaking, he himself would really like to make friends with Lu Xu too. Disregarding their fight, that kid had a pleasant personality. At that moment, if Lu Xu asked him about the schedule for the next day, he could still pretend to do him a favor by revealing the timetable. It was not anything confidential anyway. But the reality was Lu Xu did not even have the time to talk to him. From Hao Jichao's distress, plus 199. Until Hao Jichao was more than 10 meters away, he could still hear Lu Xu talking over his phone. I really didn't touch your TV box. I've been out for a few days and busy with my training so how could I go back to spoil your TV? Huh? It was spoiled once I left? Listen, it's really not me. Did I not tell you? I really cannot go back to fix it for you now. I didn't change. Listen, you shouldn't watch so much TV and so much drama. Then Chen Zuan heard Lu Xiaoyu talking coldly, see? You just don't want me to watch TV. Lu Xu's face was bathed in sweat when he ended the call. Luckily he had managed to calm Lu Xiaoyu down. By his side, Chen Zuan was laughing like an idiot at his discomfort. 
They could even argue over trivial matters like a TV box. <laughs> Lu Xu. I didn't know you secretly hid Lu Xiaoyu's TV box before. Lu Xu glanced at him, I will smack you if you don't go shower now. From Chan Zuan's distress, plus 667. There was a separate toilet in each room and a warm bath. The little fatty walked out after taking his shower, Lu Xu, what do you think our training will be like in the following days? The little fatty was truly worried about that. In any case, if the training was about abilities, his were actually the lowest among the group. Hence, he was afraid that it would be too much of a strain for him. To Chen Zuan, it was a very rare opportunity and Lu Xu was one of his most trusted people so far. Thus, out of instinct, he decided to discuss with Lu Xu, Lu Xu, say something. Do you know what our training will be about in the following days? But Lu Xu cast him a glimpse, no idea. Honestly, Chen Zuan's current trust in Lu Xu had been based on his immense power. In his opinion, there was nothing beyond Lu Xu's abilities. When Lu Xu admitted that he did not know as well, Zuan was dumbfounded for a few seconds, how can you not know? Lu Xu mused for a while, because I secretly hid Lu Xiaoyu's TV box before? From Chan Zuan's Distress, Plus 667 Chapter 350 Mission In fact, the training was not as scary as Chen Zuan had expected. There were no competitions of physical abilities nor actual combat between students, which made the little fatty rather relieved. At the very least, he was on the same starting line as the rest in other areas. The first lesson was on guns, taught by a commanding officer the students had never met before. But the first thing he did after the lesson started was to ask who Lu Xu was. After Lu Xu stood up, he nodded his head and gestured for him to sit down for the lesson. At that moment, everyone sensed that something was off. They were all curious about the happenings in the past 10 plus days, which earned Lu Xu such a high reputation among the veterans. It was a privilege more than one could wish for. Even as a class a aptitude genius, your abilities would be pointless if you could not earn the respect of your future comrades in arms in the heavenly network. Moreover, among the many geniuses present, not everyone could become a significant figure in the network. Looking at all the faces down the podium, the officer said, you are all about to ascend to class C, maybe in half a year or maybe one year. But sooner or later you would reach class C, thus, with flying daggers as the prerequisite. I am not going to teach you how to use guns, but how to guard against them. For example, what can be guarded by your spirit chi armor and what cannot? You need to know all that by heart. It suddenly struck Lu Xu that it was a mere sweeping statement to claim that Class Cs could defend themselves against all hot weapons. There were so many hot weapons, after all. A pistol was a hot weapon, so was a nuclear bomb. Thus, it was only true that they could guard against most guns. Like what the officer had said, they were defenseless in the face of over half of the types of sniper rifles. After that was more advanced knowledge about the use of magical instincts to locate sniper bullets and throwing daggers to make a slight change in the trajectory of the bullet. In other words, with magical instincts and flying daggers, you would be able to deflect the bullet away, though you could never survive the shot. The death blow flying daggers of class D could surpass the speed of sound and those of class C could be even faster, but most guns including sniper rifles, could only fire bullets at below 1 km per second. With prior experience with guns, Chun Zuan expected himself to excel in this subject. But he soon found himself struggling to catch up with the contents, which seemed completely different from what he had previously learned. The officer took three days in total to teach guns alone. The second subject was on team collaboration and gesture tactics. Many military amateurs actually knew about gesture tactics. At first, Chen Zuan thought he would ace this chapter too, since it was a popular activity in the club, where competitions were held on the familiarity with the tactics. However, this subject turned out to be even more unexpected. In the original gesture tactics, curling all fingers and sweeping them up and down across the chest meant automatic weapons, which was not taught here at all. 
Instead, they learned the gesture for use flying daggers. Basically, it was way too different from Chan Zuan's previous knowledge. At the end of every day, each of them also needed to learn about various regulations in groups under the officer's guidance. Not only that, they were required to recite them too. Chen Zuan could never have imagined that his performance in this subject was way below average, let alone to ace it. Lu Xu's memory had been extraordinarily good even before the regeneration of his spirit qi. Now, it was not an exaggeration to say that he could remember thousands of words in a short time. Although he might miss some details after a long time, he had no difficulty in dealing with spot-checking and recitals. It was his self-esteem as a well-performing student. Nonetheless, Chen Zuan was a different case. Since primary school, he had been producing poor results for more than a decade. His memory was unmatched. Open the book, Ma Dongmei. Close the book, Ma Wat Dongmei. Open the book, Ma Dongmei. Close the book, Wat Dongmei. Open the book, Ma Dongmei. Close the book, Ma Dong Wat. Open the book, Ma Dongmei. Close the book, Ma Dongmei. Ma Dongmei. Ma Dongmei. Okay, I remember it. At examination, Sun Honglei. Based on his talent and studies, it was really too hard on him to ask him to recite books. Afterwards, in addition to learning regulations, there were personal reflections as well. In fact, all of them were treated as rookies, and the same pattern might repeat again in the practitioners' universities. Perhaps they would learn it a second time in the future. Actually, the Heavenly Network gave them one magical stone per day as an allowance. Lu Xu also noticed that there was an exceptionally abundant amount of spirit qi under the Lingjing Lane. Indeed, it made perfect sense. Of course, the base of the Heavenly Network would be built at a place with rich spirit qi resources for the use of their fighters. The intense training lasted for half a month. Actually, schools in most places were already starting the new academic semester, and even Lu Xu thought that it was about time to go home for lessons. However, Lu Xiaoyu was very unhappy, though Lu Xu was rather pleased with getting one magical stone per day. On the fifteenth day, all of them were gathered together for the official group allocation. Hao Qi Chao stood before the 84 students, in order to obtain the training methods, you must accomplish military achievements which most of you do not currently have. But it's all right. Here comes your opportunity. Now, in five minutes, change back to your original attire. You will be heading to various places as students to complete missions. None of these missions are supposed to be easy. Thus, I suggest you take it seriously. The relevant information will be given to you in due time. Hope you can make the most of it. Each group consisted of seven people, and Lu Xu's comprised of Chen Zuan, Chao Qingxi, Chang Qiuqiao, himself and three other strangers. Speaking of which, Lu Xu could vaguely recall that Shi Xue Jin had mentioned something about missions, but he had almost forgotten about it after more than ten days of studying. To their surprise, the document given to them was about a secret black market on the boundary between Yuzhou and Shanzhou. According to the information, the person in charge of the market was engaged in scams, robbery, and other unscrupulous deeds under the disguise of the black market. It was a case where unlawful practitioners killed and robbed. And the objective of the mission was to crack down on the black market and kill all 21 targets on the list. Lu Xu thought this was to let the geniuses have a taste in killing. If not, it would be too late to realize that oneself was scared of blood during his or her real fights with external metahumans. Hence, through the use of one stone to kill two birds, the students could start with the gray areas in the local cultivation arena while they eradicated some criminals at the same time. Was the external cultivation situation already this messy? What was the hurry with the heavenly network? But... Black market? Black markets were a good place. Lu Xu exclaimed.
What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 